slowly, which is very difficult because I grew up in New York. Uh, I have a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation, but before I even start that presentation, I want to make two very important points. If you want more prosperity for everyone in society, you need a bigger economy. More GDP, gross domestic product, as the economists say. In other words, you need to increase your growth rate. Taxes and spending, those two features of fiscal policy, have an impact on your growth rate because when tax rates are higher, as Robert was talking about, you are discouraging people from working, saving, and investing. And when government gets bigger, even if the EU paid for all your budget, if your government is getting bigger, that hurts your economy because resources, labor and capital, are being diverted from the productive sector of the economy. So you want to focus on having the lowest possible tax rates and having the smallest possible government. This is why Hong Kong grows so much faster and is so much richer than the high tax big government economies like France and Greece and Italy. Uh, but let me go ahead and, uh, and, and talk about this in the context of tax competition because I agree completely with what Robert was saying. We want tax competition because it sort of ties the hands of the politicians. The politicians, if they get to make decisions without any constraints, they will spend a lot, they will tax a lot, they will have these cartel agreements with each other at the European Commission and at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. They'll get the IMF and the World Bank to try to bully nations into imposing higher tax rates and making government bigger. In other words, if you have five gas stations in your town and they're all allowed to meet in secret, what do they want to do? They want to have a cartel and all agree to charge high prices. That's exactly what governments are doing. They're trying to create an OPEC for politicians. And tax competition is the only way to try to control the way that politicians become uh, so greedy. And, and tax competition is it, it's a very positive feature of globalization. As the economy, the world economy, has become more integrated, jobs and investment can cross borders. And that means that the countries with lower tax rates get rewarded. But of course, the politicians from high tax countries, they don't like that. Uh, and and, and they, they're very upset about what's been happening uh, around the world. If you go back to 1980, the average top income tax rate on, on households was more than 67%, and the average corporate tax rate was 48%. But because we've had globalization and tax competition, these rates have come down a lot. And this is really surprising because we all know that politicians uh, like to say, oh, rich people are bad, big corporations are bad, we should tax them. But they've lowered tax rates. Not because they wanted to, though. When Reagan and Thatcher started cutting tax rates back about 1980, that helped the American economy and the British economy, but it also created competitive pressure on other countries to lower their tax rates. That is tax competition working. And when these other countries lower their tax rates, their economies did better as well. In other words, tax competition forced the politicians to do things that were good for the economy. Because you know, politicians normally would have very high tax rates if they think their taxpayers have no choice, if they think their taxpayers are, are captive customers. Sort of like a, if there was only one gas station in a town, that one gas station would charge very high prices. Well, that's what governments used to do before tax competition and globalization. Here's a chart showing what's happened to corporate tax rates around the world. It's, we have the OECD average in blue and then the U.S. in red. The U.S. actually sort of led the way with a big cut in corporate tax rates, but then we, have, we stopped competing. And now we have companies leaving America. Now, what should we do about that in the United States? Make it illegal to leave. Sh sh should, we, should we force other countries to raise their tax rates? Should we turn American companies into slaves and not allow them to leave? No. We should lower our corporate tax rate. And, and likewise, 
if, a, if, a, if some country in Europe decides to put in a 10% flat tax and the jobs and the investment go to that flat tax country, France will be upset, Italy will be upset. Should France and Italy be able to turn that country into a fiscal colony and make them change their tax laws or make them say no to foreign investment? Of course not. That would be very unjust and improper. Uh, so the whole premise of tax competition is that it's a good thing, a liberalizing force in the world economy, and we have so much evidence in recent decades about why it's good. Unfortunately, we also have some evidence from around the world. Oh, and by the way, it's not just that the income tax rates fell. We also saw lower capital gains taxes, lower taxes on dividends, on interest, uh, death taxes and wealth taxes being eliminated and reduced. These are all things very, very good for the economy. But here's the problem. As I already suggested, the high-tax governments of the world don't like this liberalizing tax competition. I mean, when, when Slovakia did a flat tax last decade, that was good news. You, know, th th this, th you were a tiger economy for a while. I mean, now the reform effort sort of stalled, and maybe, <coughs> maybe something good will happen as a new government is formed, and the reform agenda will be back on track. But Slovakia was a success story last decade, uh, not just with, in terms of the flat tax, but other reforms. And you have factories coming into Slovakia. That was upsetting some of the high-tax countries. I mean, you had just across the border in Austria, the Austrian politicians were upset that you had a 19% flat tax because they had a high tax rate of 50%. I'm surprised uh, Dr. Zundrich uh, hadn't moved here uh, already. Instead, he moved to Switzerland, so he figured out, he figured out some place to escape to. Uh, but what we have now is a global battle. We have a global battle between the high tax governments and the international bureaucracies that are controlled by the high tax governments, and those high tax governments are trying to stamp out the low tax jurisdictions. They're trying to force them to change their laws. They don't want Slovakia to go back to a flat tax. Because if Slovakia goes back to a flat tax, that's going to be good for your economy and you're going to attract jobs and investment from the other countries in Europe. And so they would like Slovakia instead to not only keep the, the, the discriminatory tax rates, they would like the top tax rate to go up. Why? Because that would undermine Slovakian competitiveness and it would make it easier for France and Germany and Italy and Greece to have bad tax policy. Uh, so, so when we think about this fight, we're really making a choice. When, when, the, when, when your ministers from Slovakia go to Brussels uh, and, and meet with other ministers, what are they fighting for? Lower tax rates and more efficient government? Or do they want a bigger welfare state? Uh, do they want more growth or more, or more redistribution? And I guess what, I have just two minutes left, so I, I want to close with a very important point. Europe already is in a fiscal crisis. We've already seen Greece and Italy and Spain and Portugal and Ireland require bailouts. Well, you know what? It's going to get much worse. It's going to get much worse because Europe is aging. Now, every year older I get, I like the fact that we all live longer. But you know what? That's also combined with the fact that people are having fewer and fewer children. The welfare state is predicated on what's called the population pyramid. A few old people, then a big generation of t workers or taxpayers, and then an even bigger generation of children. And so a lot of the welfare state is redistribution from the young to the old. So when there's a lot of young and only a few old, the welfare state works mathematically. I don't like it. I'm a libertarian. I believe human liberty is the first priority. But a welfare state with a population pyramid works. But guess what? Europe already is turning into a population cylinder. The birth rate is down, and people are living longer, and not only that, if you look at the projections over the next 20, 30, 40 years, you're going to have an upside-down pyramid. So the fiscal collapse, the economic chaos we're already seeing in southern European economies is going to spread, and that means there's a desperate importance, a critical importance for Europe, for Slovakia specifically, engage in the reforms, restrict your welfare state, have private pensions, go back to a flat tax, because you need to do the policies today to save you from this demographic fiscal crisis that otherwise will hit tomorrow. Thank you very much.
Takže, máme nejaké otázky a bol som teda upozornený, aby som nehal každého teda najskôr to vrť. Ok, so I will try to slide for you. Um, you said that the states around the world uh, are decreasing uh, taxes, but they are not decreasing uh, their expenditures, so how do they uh, do it? The data I showed at the beginning of my presentation was about how countries were lowering tax rates. <coughs> lowering tax rates doesn't mean lowering tax revenues. You have this thing called the Laffer Curve. And so, for instance, in the United States, we used to have a top tax rate on people of 70%. Ronald Reagan lowered that top tax rate on people all the way down to 28%. And all the left-wingers in America said, that's not fair. The rich people won't pay enough. The government will be starved of revenue. What we actually saw was that rich people paid five times as much money to the government at 28% as they did at 70%. And we saw that all around the world, lower tax rates did not mean lower revenue. By the way, I want lower revenue for government because I think we do need to shrink the size of the public sector. What I said at the beginning is completely true. A big government, even if somehow everyone else is paying for it, a big government hurts your economy because a public sector is not as efficient as a private sector. So I want lower tax rates. Part of me doesn't worry about it because you will have this laffer curve revenue feedback, but also I want to cut tax rates enough that the government does lose money, and we do need, that was my conclusion of my remarks, to avoid the future fiscal crisis, we need to somehow make government grow slower. The private sector should grow faster than the government. Well, sh second question, uh, should, uh, could uh, things like uh, basic uh, research, education or culture be sustainable uh, also in a low tax regime? You're talking, I assume the question is about whether government should fund some of these things. Uh, government whether they are whether, whether the government funding is sustainable in a low tax regime. Well, let me just give you an example. Hong Kong and Singapore have very highly ranked education systems. They have excellent infrastructure. They have all sorts of culture and arts, and yet government spending only consumes 20% of economic output. In Slovakia, your government consumes 40%. Are you getting better government than Hong Kong? No. No. So, so you could cut your government in half with, maybe not overnight, but with the right long-term reforms, you could make yourself more like Hong Kong, have a more efficient government. Switzerland's government is 33% of GDP. It's smaller than, than uh, in Slovakia. Are you getting better government than Switzerland? So I think you always need to put pressure on the politicians. They'll tell you, oh, if you, if you don't let us spend more money, children won't, won't get educated. The roads will fall apart. Bridges will fall down. They're lying. Um, where, put, put, uh, uh, put, uh, the, how, how, to, how to fix the demographic uh, winter? Could it be fixed by immigration? Or do you think that a tax regime uh, could be introduced that is inducive to like, growing families and having children? Uh, that's, that's a cultural change that I don't think is going to be very sensitive to tax policy. Uh, I mean, you know, could, could, could you tell people that they get 5,000 uh, euros off their taxes that they have a child? Maybe that will convince some people. But I really think that these demographic shifts are permanent and cultural. And so what you have to do is to do what, say, Australia has done. And I, I, and, and Slovakia does have some degree of what the World Bank calls a second pillar in your pension system, right? Uh, you need to expand upon that so that the state, the government obligation in the future will shrink because people are saving for themselves. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank I you. We have it all. Okay. Uh, <laughs>